my friends. Today I am unboxing and trying out the supplies of the Heikala art box. Now I'm showing the unboxing, but I won't actually go into each supply specifically. I know Heikala already has a video on YouTube and even a post on her Instagram explaining what each product is. The only reason I wanted to show the unboxing was to give you guys an idea of what each product retails for. And I just wanted to preface by saying this. I didn't buy this box to get a great discount on each of these products. I bought this for two main reasons. One, to support Heikala, an artist I absolutely love and adore. And two, to get all these products conveniently in one box so I didn't have to go out and get them all separately. Also, those two buttons that you see me unwrap in the beginning, those were not a part of the art box. I bought those separately, they were just put in the box. I really love buttons, so I just wanted to get those two because I like the design of those. But now going into the products, I did wanna let you guys know that I did not find each product on the company website. Some I did find from retailers like Amazon, Blix, or other websites like that. It was very hard to find a lot of these prices. And I do wanna say also, some of these things when I found it were on sale, but of course I did not wanna give you the sale price because who knows how long that will last. For example, the Saunders watercolor paper was on sale for $19 and some change, which is a drastically different price from the almost $27 it actually cost. So if you do wanna get these products, keep in mind that, that you can probably find some sales if you are getting them individually. I also wanted to let you guys know the Holbein synthetic brushes were impossible to find. I went through countless of pages on Google trying to find a site that sold these and I could not. They were literally non-existent. I was very confused and very frustrated, but Heikala actually does sell one of these brushes in the size two on her site for $12. The sizes that come in the box are a size four and a size zero, but for the sake of not trying to guess too much, I just put these brushes at a retail value of $12. So the grand total of these supplies individually is $138.02. The Heikala Art Supply Box is $159. Now keep in mind that if you are buying the supply box that you do have to pay for DHL Express shipping, which I think is preferred. And for me in America, that was about $26, which would bring my grand total up to $185. Now I do not know how much it would cost to ship each of these supplies from the retailers individually. So I wouldn't get so hung up about the $26 in shipping because you might have to pay a pretty penny getting each supply shipped individually. So I would just kind of put the difference at $159 versus $138, which is a difference of about 21 bucks. Now, whether that is worth it is totally up to you. I can't tell you if you think it's worth it to try and get each product individually. I know for me, the convenience of getting them all in one box was totally worth it, even with the DHL Express shipping because I got the products a lot faster. So I don't think it's any sweat off my back and I'm also supporting an artist that I love. Okay, so before we actually go into the painting portion of this video, I wanted to give you a quick tip. If you were trying to get this box and unfortunately you couldn't because it sold out in like five minutes this time around, I have a way that you can shorten your checkout time that if you didn't know, it might just be helpful to know. What you wanna do is a few minutes before the launch time, you wanna go onto the website and pick on any product. It could be something that you actually do want or it can even be something that you actually don't want. So click on this product and then you're going to add it to your cart. And then of course, if you are trying to get extra things, go ahead and add all of those things that you want to your cart. But if you don't, just do one thing, go to your cart and go on to the checkout button. This is going to bring you to the contact information page. And so there you just wanna insert all of your information like you usually would if you were going to buy this thing, your email address, your shipping address, all that it asks you for. And then you're gonna click on continue to shipping. And I just had to cover up my information so I can show you what this page looks like. And then it'll show you what the express shipping will be to your country, which I think is also really handy to kind of know uh, like about what it'll be. And then after this, you're going to go back to your cart. And then this is where if you didn't actually want the thing in your cart, you can remove it. If you did want to just keep it there, it doesn't matter. But now you can go back to the home page, click on the art supply box, add that to your cart, and your information is already going to be saved. So all you'll have to do is put in your payment information, click the pay button, and that is it. It'll cut down your paying time drastically. For me, I got to get this box in under a minute. And I think I was one of the first to get it because it came to my house six days later. So this is just a good tip if you wanted to know that.
Finally, we are on to the painting process itself. Now, as you can see, the sketch was already done when I started doing the line work of this piece, and that was done for a very specific reason. I did not want to sketch this on camera because I knew it was going to be a hard piece to do. For this piece, I did want to take heavy inspiration from Heikala since this is her art supply box, and with her pieces, what I really like is her visual storytelling. She's able to capture such a mood, such a story without using any words at all, and I love that. Her pieces are very background heavy, so I knew for this one I wanted to do that. That being said, I'm not a person who does a lot of backgrounds. That is something I want to work on, but as of now, it's not something that I'm great at. I'm not very great at perspective, which makes you wonder why I did a piece that has such an interesting perspective. But I did want to challenge myself with this piece, especially because I wanted to do justice to the products in the box. Also, Heikala takes a lot of inspiration from Studio Ghibli, which is something I take a lot of inspiration from, which is what inspired these two characters eating food. What I love in Studio Ghibli movies is that they always manage to take time for taking time. So instead of always just getting through the plot and going quick, 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 they have those moments where they just slow down and show you the environment. And sometimes they just show you some people eating a meal. And that is something I love. So I knew I wanted to incorporate that into this piece. So once I had the idea for this piece down, I did a lot of sketches to try and get the angles right with the people and even with the background. And that was very hard. I knew this was going to be a hard piece going into it and I struggled. I tried to use the colored pencils to sketch out this idea, but I'm very used to working with a very fine tip mechanical pencil. And with regular wooden pencils, the tips get very dull very fast. And so the lines always end up blurring out. And that was something I totally struggled with. I erased the characters. I don't even know how many times trying to get the pose right. So I couldn't do this on camera because I knew this was going to be a struggle. And halfway through sketching it, I thought I was just going to kind of throw it away and get rid of it. But I didn't want to waste the paper. I wanted to power through. I did like the idea. So I knew I just had to keep pushing myself. Now it's time for a quick confession. I've actually never used a brush pen before. Not in all of my years of being an artist have I ever used a brush pen. And I knew this was going to be difficult because I'm a fine liner user. My lines are always very thin and always very consistent. And with brush pens, if you did not know, that is almost impossible to make very consistently thin lines, which for a lot of people, they love the variation and they love that you're able to get different widths of line. But for me, this was something that I knew was going to be challenging. But I will say it was a lot of fun. I really loved using the brush pen. I know it was very difficult. I know I got a lot of variation in my lines, but I think it added a character to the piece that made it look even more fun and actually pulled it together a lot better than I think a fine liner would have given me. Now we're on to the most exciting part of this whole process, the inks. And before I get into why I was personally excited to try out inks, being a primarily watercolor artist, I wanted to talk about some interesting things I learned along the way. First, I learned that once inks dries in your palette, you cannot reactivate it like watercolor. This was something that I wish I knew beforehand, but of course I am a trial and error kind of person, so I only learn through trial and error. This piece took me a few days to get done because I had other things to do most of the days I was working on it. And I realized when I tried to reactivate it that it was dried, it was donezo So I had to clean it all out. And this made me sad because if I knew that going into this, I wouldn't have wasted so much ink in the beginning pouring into the palette. Not that I poured a lot of ink into the palette, but if I would have known what I know now, I would have definitely used a little bit less, especially in the beginning. Another interesting thing I learned, a little ink goes a long way. With watercolor, sometimes you need to really dig into the pan and get a lot of pigment to mix with water to have a nice vibrant color. With inks, this wasn't the case. I felt like I could use a little bit and dilute it with a lot of water and still get a very prominent color payoff. That was really exciting and I was really glad that that was the case because it really solidified that even though these are small tubes of ink, you don't really need a lot to create a lot of paintings. Also, I did want to mention that I really like how the inks work with this paper specifically. I don't know if it'll be all watercolor paper, but this is cold pressed paper and I think the inks were able to soak into the paper so nicely. I was able to get really smooth gradients, which was really exciting. It didn't dry down too fast. It wasn't too chalky, pasty, any other weird word that could be used to describe paints. It was just so flat and so smooth and you can definitely see it when I do the first layer of the background of the outside. It just looks so nice and I love that. Now, for those of you who may not know what the main difference between watercolors versus inks are, it's that once you paint with inks and that dries down, you cannot re-lift the ink. It is permanent. 
And that is a very big pro con trade off with watercolors. You might like this, you might not like this. With watercolors, even if it dries down into the paper, you may be able to reactivate it with enough scrubbing with water. With inks, you're not gonna have this happen. Now this is a con in the sense of if you are a watercolor artist, you might like that if you put watercolor where you didn't mean to, you're able to scrub this off with a little bit of effort and a little bit of water. With inks, you really have to be careful where you place it because once it's on the paper, it's almost impossible to really lift it. Even when it's still wet, it's not gonna be an easy liftable thing. Since I'm used to using watercolor, I am always very careful where I place it because even though you do have the ability to relift some of the watercolor, you still have to be careful because it isn't a foolproof plan and once it is down, it is hard to lift. So you might be thinking, isn't it better to always have that ability to kind of be able to lift if things make mistakes? Yes and no. It might be good because it doesn't matter if you're not doing too many layers. But if you do want to add overlays, if you do want to add an area of darkness, or if you do want to make a cohesive look by adding a light coat of whatever color you want to add to your piece, with watercolor, it's not easy to do this. Because once you do try and add this color, if you have a lot of paint on the paper already, you risk muddying up the colors when you add another wash and you lift up those layers that aren't completely soaked into the paper. With inks, since it does dry down permanently, if you are doing multiple layers and multiple layers, even when you go in for an overlay or just those multiple Multiple layers you're not gonna lift up those previous layers of ink which means your painting is just going to have that overlay so this is great because you're able to tie in colors in a way that you can't specifically do with watercolors unless you mix each color individually and then apply to the paper but that's a little bit more tricky than just going over the whole piece with a specific color. Because this was an effect I was very excited to try, this piece was made keeping in mind that I wanted to do very heavy overlays. So I went in and did all of the base colors of course, but I did want to make sure that the background, it was a night scene and that I was able to add a blue green tint towards the entire background. But to make it even more fun, I had them sitting by a window. So I wanted to add a yellow light shining through that window so you can see this cohesive light look and I think at the end it really came out super awesome like I know I wouldn't have been able to do this with watercolor I know things would have got muddy things would have mixed together in a not great way but this was just so perfect because just in one swipe of the paint I was able to get such a cohesive look to the entire piece where you can totally tell that it's nighttime and you can totally tell that there's a yellow light coming from inside the house now there is one last thing that I did want to mention as you probably saw in the beginning I did use masking fluid for some pieces in the background for the character who's leaning against the railing. Masking fluid is something I've always had an issue with. I've tried some brands in the past and I've had an issue with it ripping up the paper so I was scared of this happening. So as you can see I didn't outline her entire body with it just the borders of her because I knew if it did rip up the paper it wouldn't be too much or too noticeable. With this masking fluid it was very exciting because it lifted up very nicely. It was such an easy peel. I've never had a masking fluid that did it that easily. However, there is something that interesting that you can see if you look especially at that character who's leaning on the on the railing. Where her hair is, there seems to be an area of darkness and lightness and that line of dark versus lightness is directly where the masking fluid was placed. Now if I of course put the masking fluid over her entire body, you definitely wouldn't see this. But, and you can't really tell on the railing itself, but I can kind of see it, especially working so closely on it. And I could tell that there was this line of difference. And the only thing is I can't tell for sure if it was fully the masking fluid's fault or if it was a problem of I did erase this character quite a few times. She was one of the people I had struggled with in the beginning. So maybe having erased the paper, I did weaken the paper a little bit and that could have something to do with why the masking fluid did that effect. But I don't really think that's the case just because I feel like if it was the eraser's fault, you would see it with more of the character, but you can clearly see a distinctive line where her hair is. So that's just a little bit of a con, but I've always had a big fear with masking fluid. I think if I were to use it again, I might just cover in the whole character so at least the paint will still go on cohesively. And I believe that's everything I wanted to say. Overall, I love these products and I really think that I'm gonna start using inks a lot more than watercolor just because of the effects, like I said. And I just love the way it went on paper. I love the effect. It was just beautiful. I really like this piece, honestly. And it's crazy to think that there was a time that I thought about throwing it away. But please tell me what you think. If you did get the Heikala art box, please tell me how you like the products. Share with me some artwork that you made. And if you are an ink artist, tell me what you do like or don't like about inks. If you have any tips, I'll gladly take those as well because I don't know all the tips. 
But thank you guys so much for watching. Please have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great life. And of course, like always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.